Diane to do our reading this morning. Diane Nichols comes from 2 Peter and chapter 1. This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Saviour. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvellous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Thank you very much, Diane. Um, I don't know about your house, but in our house, there's two types of letters we get. One type is a letter for me to open, and another type is a letter for Maureen to open. So if it looks sort of typed and businessy, and as Maureen would say, boring, that's mine. If it's handwritten, however, I don't get a look in. That's hers. Because we, we like to get this personal stuff. Now, I want us to see that Peter is writing a very personal letter to you and me today. He says, I'm writing to you who share the same precious faith. So the same precious faith that Peter has is ours. So this letter today is being written to John King, Maureen King, everybody on the screen here. So I want us to take what Peter's saying very personal because He's saying, um, Peter's saying, God's given us everything we need to live a godly life. Then he's going to give us some stuff to work on, which is character stuff. And a bit further down, and he says, those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind. So we don't want to be short-sighted or blind, do we? We want to grow in our faith. Um, because there's nothing better than seeing uh, Nathan and Theo and uh, Nathaniel. Nathaniel. When, when you see them, you kind of want to look at them and you, you really want them to coo back, don't you? But when they get to about seven, eight, nine, ten, you don't want them to be babies. You want them in their development. And God, well, Paul often in his letters berates the, the listeners to saying, you really ought to be growing up now but I'm having to write stuff that's milk when you should be really on meat. So I believe Peter's given us a bit of meat to chew on because he's making it very clear, firstly, that the faith we have, we can't invent, we can't make, we can't earn. It's a gift. It's something that we enter into in an intimacy of relationship. Now, when sometimes perhaps you hear some older Christian some ancient person like myself talking about, and maybe we might say, well, I felt God say this. You might think that we're saying God sort of points down from heaven and goes, hello, John, 
this is what I want to say to you today. It's not like that. God speaks to us in many different ways, but it's stuff that you understand out of your growing. Now, I thought uh, a, a quick thought. Uh, I can remember Maureen before she remembers me. Isn't that sweet? Eh? I, I, a friend of mine had a barbecue and he said, I'm going to invite this girl, Maureen Elsie. She's a laugh. Now, she don't remember it, but I remember. And, and so I, I kind of vaguely met her. Then when I felt I wanted to start a youth group in our church, I, I went to a couple of other churches that had a youth group, because ours didn't, and said, can I borrow two of your young people? Because I can't invite my mates in if there's nobody there. So the ministers kindly let me borrow two from an Anglican church and two from a Baptist church. Uh, one of the ones that came from an Anglican church Strangely enough, was this girl called Maureen Elsie. And uh, kind of when I got going in this youth group, I actually discovered that she was better on doing Bible studies. I was useless at doing a Bible study. And she was quite good. And then I, I actually went to the church and said, look, I think we ought to go and knock on the doors all around the church. So the church put out a note because I was trying to provoke the people in the church to come with me because I don't like the job. So the church put out this note. John is said that we should visit everybody around the church. So if anybody wants to do it, see John. So I think the only one that saw me was Maureen Elsie, really. So anyhow, eventually I left living down in Kent and I left this, uh, this Maureen Elsie. She'd now come on to take over the youth group and I moved up north. Uh, eventually, after being there some years, I discovered this very close friend of mine I had. Uh, much stronger feelings for. Eventually, we talked about it, found that she had the same feelings, decided to pray about it, and I could say the rest is history. What I can tell you is this. I still discover things about her in, in, in a caring way that I didn't quite know. Because what I'm trying to point out, boring you with the, my relationship, is that relationships grow. There was a time when I kind of vaguely knew her. And, and it's the same in our faith. There was a time when I first invited Jesus to come in to my heart. And, and I remember looking at older Christians and some of them we moved. And I, I wish I got moved like that. I remember seeing one leader crying. So I, I, I thought maybe that made me nice and religious. So I spent ages trying to produce a tear. It, it doesn't work. <laughs> you see, you can't make... You can't make God do stuff. You can't earn your salvation. It, the intimacy with God, I, I have to tell you, is a process. Just as I've bored you with the details, some of them, not all of them, uh, of my relationship with Maureen, there is a relationship that grows. So if you find yourself thinking, well, Brian or Steve say this or John and Linda say that, and, and you, it's not your experience, they're worrying. It's part of our onward journey that we're going to grow into. Now, there is some stuff that, that Peter lays out that we can do that's practical. It's really stuff that's about our character. And um, he's saying that his divine nature wants to help us escape from the world's corruption. And the stuff we learn in our life that, that God is saying, I don't want you to, to be like that. And. Um, the first one I'm, I'm talking about, I'll get there. I'll get there. It says, supplement your faith with a, a generous provision of moral excellence. Something I, I hear on the news, I don't know if you hear this phrase, talking about people that they've lost their moral compass. Kind of not sure what's right and what's wrong anymore. Uh, the, the NIV uses the phrase goodness. The, R, the AV says virtue. And we need to work on making choices. I do remember when I, I said to God, okay, I do want to live a holy life. That means that I have to make some right choices and I have to say no to that. And um, when I was a mechanic, somebody wanted to sell me a, a, a nice set of oxyacetylene burners. And, and when I saw them, I really wanted them. They, they were just a nice little set that went in a case. 
and it was at a very reasonable price. But when I thought about it, I think I thought, hmm, he could have only got that at that reasonable price the wrong way. And uh, it was a relative, and I had to go back and say, uh, uh, sorry, I, I, I can't buy it. No, sorry. Because you see, the, 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 the God wants us to have this moral compass. He wants us to make right choices. And he says to it, add knowledge. Now, I want to say the knowledge that we need to add to us isn't just, and it's good to study. I'm not saying it's not. This is what we need to consume. God's word. Now, there are three translations that I would particularly recommend. That's the authorized version. Now, I grew up reading that one when it was all these and those, and everybody prayed in that way as well, really. Fortunately, we've left that behind. Um, Maureen likes the uh, new RS, uh, authorized version and King James. King James version, sorry. I have an NIV, New International Version, and I also like the New Living Version. And basically, the translators have tried to um, translate the, the text sort of um, accurately, word for word. Now, there are other translations that are equally good, um, but they're not translated word for word. I've got one that uh, I got many years ago. I think we got it when we first got married. It's called the Living Bible Paraphrased. So somebody read the Bible and didn't do a word for word translation, kind of tried to explain the gist of it. It's kind of what the message and the, the Passion Bible does. The, the authors uh, have tried to dig behind what the word is. So what I would suggest when we're studying the word, use something like the NIV or the AV or the New uh, International, New Living, and, and supplement it. That Use the other ones to help deepen your relationship. Because it's, it's those things. Now, in my growing up, I was still, um, of, of course, to be honest, not to steal. And, and I didn't. I mean, as a kid, before I got converted, I used to scrumple a lot, take stolen food. When I got converted, that changed. But I had this thing that we did at work um, called a perk. Now, I'm not going to judge anybody, but that was the phrase. It was a perk. So when I was a mechanic and my car broke down, I told the foreman what I needed. Um, he would take it off the shelf and I would fit it to my car and he would then put it against one of the other vehicles because I worked on fleet maintenance. Everybody did it. And um, I worked in another place. And there, there was a petrol pump. So every now and again, people at the place would take some petrol. So... I wouldn't take loads like they did, of course. I just took a bit. And there was a time when I needed an alternator and it just was lying there on the shelf. Nobody needs it, I took it. But after a while, actually, after I'd left the firm, God convicted me that this perk was actually stealing. So I actually wrote to the firm. I'd left the firm and left the area, actually, and sent them a check. They wrote back and said, thank you. But, but you see, it is through God's word. It's getting God's word into us so that we can understand um, what God is saying. It says, add to knowledge self-control. Now, you look at Jesus. Jesus didn't react. And there's an interesting thing here, because when somebody does something, our first response is to react to them. Somebody says something nasty, boom, can not say it back? Somebody hits out, you want to hit back. But self-control is this. No, I won't. So you think of the amount of times people tried to chip, trip Jesus up. He didn't react. He acted. And, and it's a, it's, some of this stuff is learnt. Now, God has given us everything we need for godliness. So we get this stuff by asking him. We have to practice it. Lord, will you help us? And it says patience. Now, that's a pretty hard job, patience, isn't it? Patience means keep going even though the going gets tough. Now, you would think that as followers of Jesus, he'd make it easy for us. Uh, this is what he says. In the world, you will have troubles. But fear not, I've overcome the world. 
So we have to accept these are the realities of our life. Don't let anybody lie to you and say being a Christian means everything's going to be easy and smooth. But know this, that Jesus said, even in those difficulties, don't be afraid because I have overcome the world and I will be with you. We're called to um, godliness. I, I think what was said earlier, question is, what would Jesus do? In your reactions and thinking about, what would Jesus do? And we're called to love each other unconditionally. Now, I know that I'm perfect, so it makes it very easy for all of you to love me. And I have no shortcomings whatsoever. What I should really say is thank you all of you for being so gracious and looking past my shortcomings. Because that's the truth. The truth is we all have shortcomings. The only perfect person that ever lived was Jesus. The rest of us are on a journey and we don't get it right. Therefore, we need to love unconditionally each other and, and look past our short call, each other's shortcomings. And the final thing that he says is to add to yourself a love. And one of the things that I constantly have to get God to stir up in me is a love for this lost world. It may be as you, you get tired, uh, it's always sometimes a bit of an effort. But, Lord, would you put in my heart that love that you had for this lost world that you willingly gave up everything? I'm going to pray. Maybe there's something in there that God's spoken to you about and you just want to ask him to come and meet with you and to help you overcome in a particular area. Let's pray. I'm going to read from what uh, Peter says. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We've received all of this by coming to know him. And I want to say, Father, thank you that you know us and you know our shortcomings. And we ask you that you would help us. Holy Spirit, I can't change anything about me. But when I call out to you and ask you, then you step in and you continue to build up my character. It's not, it's not a self thing that I can do, but I can come to you. And I ask you if there are any areas in our lives that you've been speaking to us today about. Holy Spirit, that you would breathe on us, that you would strengthen us. You would help us to know your power in that particular area as we grow in our faith and knowledge of you. Thank you, Lord. Amen.